Hey, what's up everybody? Chris here with another Proto Tech Tip. And now if you're working with a Raspberry Pi and need to protect this really cool piece of hardware while still making it functional and accessible, you're gonna need a custom enclosure. So for today, we're gonna to show you how easy it is to design a custom enclosure for a Raspberry Pi using Protocase Designer. So let's just get right into it. So the first step to designing your custom enclosure is going to be understanding the form factors. There are three main types of motherboards, Mini ITX, Micro ATX, and ATX. Today we're going to focus on Mini ITX. It's the smallest standard motherboard and it's considered the category for Raspberry Pis due to their compact size and limited expansion capabilities. Now before designing a Raspberry Pi enclosure, we need to understand the layout of the specific Raspberry Pi model that we're working with. The typical form factor of a mini ITX motherboard measures 17 centimeters by 17 centimeters. For today, we're working with a Raspberry Pi 4. The Pi 4 maintains the compact and efficient design of its predecessors with dimensions of approximately 8.56 centimeters by 5.65 centimeters. Despite its small size, it packs powerful features such as dual micro HDMI ports, USB 3 support, and up to 8 gigabytes of RAM, making it a highly versatile single board computer. Now these compact dimensions make Raspberry Pi boards ideal for projects with limited space requirements. But before designing the enclosure, make note of these component dimensions while ensuring that there's going to be sufficient access to ports and connectors. Honestly, if you want to learn more about the capabilities of Raspberry Pis in general, I suggest that you check out our friend Jeff Geerling, the master behind what's possible with Raspberry Pi controllers. Next, it's smart to do a quick sketch of where the board's going to be located inside the custom enclosure to determine the minimum height, width, and depth dimensions. It's important to position the motherboard with enough clearance from the enclosure walls, and there should be at least 0.25 inches of clearance from other board edges to the enclosure walls. That's just a great rule of thumb to follow. Now the next question to ask yourself is, how will we mount the Raspberry Pi inside the enclosure? For mounting, we do suggest using threaded standoffs to raise the board above the floor of the enclosure. Now remember, you're going to want to allow a minimum of 0.25 inches of clearance from the bottom of the board to the inside surface of the enclosure. So in this scenario, you'll want to use threaded self-clinching standoffs that match the mounting hole size of the Raspberry Pi 4. The standard mounting holes on a Raspberry Pi 4 have a diameter of 0.27 centimeters. So, M2.5 threaded standoffs are going to be an ideal fit. Now, where will we need cutouts? The Pi 4 features multiple ports on its sides, each requiring precise cutouts. These include cutouts for the USB ports, the HDMI ports, Ethernet port, USB-C power input, and the 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Now, to ensure proper thermal management, consider including vents or perforations in the enclosure for adequate airflow, especially near the board, as this can help minimize overheating. Okay, so now that you have the most basic specs for your custom Raspberry Pi enclosure, you can now use Protocase Designer to quickly design and order in a matter of minutes. Let's quickly review the details that we have to work with. So we know that we have a Raspberry Pi 4 that needs a custom enclosure. We know the dimensions of the board, the considerations for clearances, and the information about which threaded standoffs we need to use. We know how the board will be mounted and where we need the cutouts. So let me show you how quick it is to design and order this enclosure inside Protocase Designer. So with Protocase Designer, you can start with over 80 plus templates to choose from as a starting point, which significantly reduces the time of creating this enclosure from scratch. Now, I know the standard off-the-shelf enclosures for Raspberry Pi boards are typically a U-shaped design, so let's just start there with our template. Now, what about the material? So we're gonna select aluminum as the metal provides excellent heat dissipation and added corrosion protection. Let's also make this enclosure traffic blue because, well, why not? It's a great color. So what about the dimensions of the enclosure? So taking into consideration the mounting specifications that we mentioned earlier, we know that we have a component that is 8.56 centimeters by 5.65 centimeters, and we want to ensure that we incorporate our clearances and allow space for air to flow. So let's make this enclosure 4.5 inches by 4.5 inches by 1.5 inches. This size is sufficient to house the board and provide space for connectors, ventilation, and any additional components that we may want to add later. 
So let's now go ahead and edit the face of the inside of the enclosure to import our Raspberry Pi as an imported 3D component. Now once we import the board, we want to select the face that will mate with the inside of the enclosure. Then we are going to place our fasteners and more specifically mount the board with our M2.5 threaded standoffs and place them according to the outline of the component. Now that you see your board mounted inside, remember it's important to position the motherboard with enough clearance from the enclosure walls. Okay, so now that our Raspberry Pi board is mounted inside of our enclosure and we see this inside the 3D viewer, let's use the component projection feature to add cutouts for each board input. Now, as mentioned, we have cutouts for USB ports, the HDMI ports, the Ethernet port, the USB-C power input, and the 3.5 millimeter audio jack. So now that we're back in the 3D viewer, let's select the face to edit that contains the I.O. inputs. You will see immediately the outlines of the cutouts from the board projected behind the material of the enclosure. This makes it really easy to precisely add cutouts for these inputs. I will go ahead and do that now. Now after I hit accept and back into the 3D viewer, we can now see that these cutouts have been added and the inputs are clearly showing. Now let's just do the same thing and add our cutouts on the face from the adjacent side. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to just add some quick ventilation cutouts to improve the airflow in and out of this enclosure. Now I am adding in more aesthetic cutouts to do this, but there are templated cutouts found in our library for basic cooling components like fans. And one last thing I want to do before I finish up here is to add some graphics to my cutouts so that we know which inputs are for which components. So I'm going to create my text graphics for my USB ports, both USB 3.0 and 2.0, my Ethernet port, my USB-C power port, and my micro HDMI slots. All right, so there you have it. We now have what looks like a custom enclosure for our Raspberry Pi. Now, I could have easily been checking the price of this enclosure live as I was making my edits by selecting the instant quote option. However, now within a few simple clicks, I can receive a quote for this design and send it immediately into manufacturing. Now, this process nearly took the entire length of this video to complete, and we could have spent a lot more time on the enclosure but we just wanted to prove a point today with the speed and convenience of doing this project using Protocase Designer. So if you are interested in learning more about designing enclosures for motherboard-based systems like Raspberry Pis, we have a guide on our website for you to check out, link below in the description. And as always, if you have any questions about Protocase Designer or your next custom project, please send us an email at info at protocase.com or info at protospacemfg.com, or just simply chat with your account manager directly. Until next time, take care.